Soon, many marsh residents will answer nature's call to nest. The female loggerhead snapping turtle is a fearsome sight as it emerges to dig a nest hole into which to deposit its eggs. Snapping turtles have strong hind claws with which they are able to scoop out nesting holes up to 12 inches deep. Once the hole is excavated, the eggs descend in a series of drops, each cascade guided by the hind claw to assure they reach the bottom. Turtle eggs have leathery shells that resemble ping pong balls in their round symmetry. As they reach the bottom of the nest chamber, the eggs sound hollow as they bounce off one another. When all eggs are deposited, the nest hole is covered before the turtle returns to the pond from which it emerged just a few hours earlier. Raccoons, skunks, and other nocturnal predators often raid turtle nests soon after the eggs are deposited. On the morning after this nest was established, evidence that at least some of the eggs were removed overnight. The American coot, a member of the rail family, makes use of reedy material left over from the previous growing season to build its nest. Once among the most abundant waterfowl in the region, coots experienced severe declines in the early 20th century from large-scale reduction of freshwater marshes drained for development and conversion to agricultural uses. Another member of the rail family, the common moorhen, also nests among the cattails and reedy vegetation at Montezuma. The moorhen is particular about conditions near its nest site, types of vegetation, water level, and availability of small pools. Its numbers, too, have increased in recent years. Another breeder at Montezuma is the pied-billed grebe. This small diver builds a mound from dead and emergent vegetation floating on the surface. Both male and female participate in the building of the nest and caring for the young. Throughout the breeding season, the hooting call of the pied-billed grebe rides above the marsh from morning to night. Once grebe chicks hatch, they remain atop the floating nest as parents forage beneath the surface nearby. Grebes are very secretive, quietly slipping into the water as they leave the nest, then surfacing quickly to feed the young. These nestlings, just days old, are closely watched by both adults. One chick is urged back onto the nest after following an adult into the water. On a calm day in summer, the marsh is a serenade of soft piping as hundreds of chicks call out to be fed. Nearby, a brood of older fledglings, stronger and more assertive, await the return of adults that bring small fish and other forage.
The nesting coots now have their own brood. These chicks have distinctive coloring that will soon disappear as they mature. These markings make them clearly visible to the parents, but also leave them particularly vulnerable to predators. The parents corral them within the protective covering of emergent plants, away from open water. All marsh birds suffer losses to predators that include other species of waterfowl, snapping turtles, mink, fox, large fish, gulls, owls, and birds of prey like the northern harrier. Scientists estimate that between 65 and 80 percent of all hatchlings do not survive to adulthood, and most waterfowl do not live beyond two years as adults. Another increasingly common predator at Matazuma is the coyote. Coyotes are opportunists that prey on rodents and ailing and injured marsh birds unable to fly off when they approach. Without predation, the marsh would not be able to maintain the balance that sustains it. Each animal, whether predator or prey, has its place in the natural order. The common moorhen brood has also been successful. Young water birds must learn to feed themselves quickly. Before long, the sun will drift lower, a signal the time is coming to fly out of the marsh on a long journey southward. One of the most colorful marsh birds is the male wood duck. These young drakes are engaged in a wetland version of King of the Hill. The winner will have this submerged log to himself, at least for a little while. As the breeding season wanes in July, the marsh takes on a multicolored tinge as flowering plants begin to climax. Among these are the distinctive marsh rose mallow, whose pink flowers serve as a distinctive counterpoint to the green and brown of needle rush, common reed, and cattail. Water lilies float on still pools surrounded by duckweed and surface algae. 